Welcome to the Banker's View from IMF series. I'm John Everington, the Middle East and Africa editor for The Banker, and I'm very happy to be joined today by Sergio Pimenta, Vice President for Middle East and Africa at the IFC. Sergio, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Thank you, John. It's a pleasure to be here. So this year's IMF meetings are going to be unlike any that any of us have ever participated in, given the impact of COVID-19. Um, the global economy obviously has taken an unprecedented hit. And of course, we're unable to meet physically and everyone is therefore meeting virtually like we are today. Um, thinking about the Middle East and North Africa, how will COVID-19 impact the economic structures of the region's economies in the longer term, do you think? So, uh, John, as you said, it's, uh, we are, we're not meeting uh, in person, but I think we still have, are able to have a very good virtual exchanges. And, and I appreciate the opportunity to talk a bit about what, uh, how, how we see the, the situation in the Middle East and North Africa. Um, I mean, as, as you know, before the, the COVID-19 crisis, the, the economic growth in the region was, was already uh, quite, quite modest, right? And, it, and it's very clear that this, uh, this pandemic is having an impact, a uh, very severe impact that, that, that will, will last. Uh, so when we look at the look at the medium term and how, how things will go after this after this pandemic or as as as, as the countries and economies uh, come out of the pandemic, uh, we really have to think about the, the structure of, of the economies in, in the Middle East and North Africa and how they can evolve. And and one of the uh, important points that I would highlight there is that uh, this this crisis is also an opportunity. To, uh, to really restructure and reform some of the parts of the economy that, that needed this change, uh, in particular to give a bigger role to the private sector. Uh, these are economies where private sector has a strong potential to grow and develop and contribute to the development of the economies. And uh, when you look at the fiscal situations of the countries getting into the crisis, um, you, you do see that there's not much room for maneuver there. So you really need funding from the private sector. You also need the innovation, the, 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 the discipline, the, the, the capacity of the, the knowledge of the private sector that will have a long lasting impact in, in the region. Uh, so that's, that's really where, where I see that uh, going, going forward. I mean, you, you will need uh, an answer to, to the crisis that is uh, this uh, complement both from what the public sector can do and what the private sector can do. Um, and, and, and yes, this is a unprecedented times, big challenges for, for the region. Uh, but, but if the right reforms are put in place now, uh, particularly when it comes to diversifying economies away from oil and taking the, the right steps to increase private sector participation, then, uh, then uh, uh, I think the opportunities will be there. And I mean, this is a process which has been going on a number of years, and it's going to be interesting to see how this crisis really accelerates that sort of shift towards the private sector that you're talking about. Um, I mean, within your role at the IFC, I mean, you've been very active working with governments um, to help, I mean, mitigate the impact of COVID-19 in these past months. Um, how adequate have government responses in the region been thus far, in your opinion? And are there any particularly positive case studies that really stand out for you in terms of government responses so far? Thank you, John. So, I, I, look, as you said, we have been, uh, as, a, as a North Africa institution, very active in the region uh, since the beginning of the crisis to uh, really step up our efforts and, uh, and to, to, to bring the needed responses to, uh, to the different countries. And uh, we do that work, uh, working closely with, uh, of course, with the World Bank, but with also with the governments in the countries. Uh, and countries uh, in the region, in particular some of them, have been very engaged in identifying what are the right reforms that can create a better environment for private sector to contribute to the resolution of the crisis. Um, whether it's uh, around issues around health, and, and, and for instance, we have, uh, you know, last, last fiscal year, IFC did a, a large uh, amount of investment in, in the health sector in the MENA region uh, with a few hundred million dollars of investment that helped prepare uh, the, 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 the different, uh, the different uh, clinics, hospitals, and, and, and private solutions to, to be uh, more adjust and more aligned to what type of response is needed in, the, in a pandemic like this one. Uh, but the governments, uh, and, I, and I, I mean, you mentioned, you asked which, which countries, I, I want to highlight some of the countries that have been particularly rapid in their response and, 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 and bringing uh, what I think are the right solutions and innovative measures uh, to, to help uh, not just contain the virus, but also help uh, preserve the economy and, and, and help the, the, the different players in the economy uh, weather this, this difficult times. I think we, we should quote uh, particular Egypt that has been uh, very, uh, very diligent in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in putting in place a certain number of reforms on, on, uh, and, and opening up the, 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 for private sector uh, to intervene in, in different sectors. And uh, one of the, the, the things they've done, I mean, they've, they've launched a pretty comprehensive package of measures 
uh, and some of them include, for instance, uh, relief for manufacturing companies, for tour operators. I mean, we know that tourism is a, is a big sector in the country and tourism is being hit very strongly by, by the crisis. So having uh, responses that are targeting the sectors that are most impacted, of course, is, is a very efficient measure. I would also like to mention Morocco. I think it's, uh, it's another country that has uh, uh, taken some rapid measures to, to help uh, uh, local, uh, local private sector uh, weather the crisis. Um, and, and we have been, uh, the, on the AFC, uh, the AFC, we have been very active in supporting these governments and supporting the private sector in those countries uh, by bringing in um, uh, additional funding and additional also advisory work. Uh, to help uh, resolve the, the to help uh, weather the crisis, um, I, I just wanted to mention that we have, uh, as soon as the pandemic started, we we did uh, deploy a, a eight billion dollar uh, global facility for uh, responding to the crisis and helping uh, our existing clients uh, in the in these difficult times, and we've been able to roll out a, a significant amount of it in the in in the North Africa and the Middle East. No, indeed. Well, it's it's a big work, and uh, we're only at the beginning of it. Um, Sergio, thank you very much indeed for your thoughts and your time today.